to the Cajun dance and the Zydeco. Filet gumbo and a crawfish pie. Filet gumbo and a crawfish pie. Welcome to Literary Gumbo, a continuing look at the world of writers, writing, publishing, and all kinds of peripheral events. Uh, my name is Fred Klein. I'm sort of the chief stirrer. Spent 40 years in publishing back in New York City. Uh, now out here and have the happy opportunity to introduce you to a very talented writer. Uh, I think he's got some surprises in store. And speaking of store, he will even talk about that. <laughs> Welcome, DJ okay. Palladino. Thank you, Fred. Thanks for Good to have me. you here. Good to have you. Good to be here. Uh, I want to talk about the, st the bookstore in a little while, but first I want to talk about you. Okay. Um, where are you from? Well, I was born in San Diego, California, so I'm a California boy. Uh huh. And uh, my family moved to the San Fernando Valley, but when I was 15, they moved to Santa Barbara. So, really? So we came to Santa Barbara when I was still in high school. Uh, so what this, because uh, he, he, the book is, uh, his wonderful book is set in 1958. Yeah, so I wasn't here. You I weren't was, here no, then? I was, in oh. fact, I was only seven oh, years old. Oh, I thought old. this was your autobiography. Oh, oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. okay. No, no. Tell but, me. I mean, I'm sure there may be some autobiographical But the one question that. I did ask wasn't true. It wasn't yeah. him, yeah. <laughs> But no, we moved up here when I was a teenager, and uh, I went to Bishop High School here, and, uh -huh. I, and I was very happy to be transported to uh, this from the San Fernando Valley of you know like Carlots and <laughs> to a place where I was lived three blocks from the beach. And now uh -huh. today, I, I live in the house that my parents bought. Yeah, on the Mesa, 19, right? 1968, on the Mesa, yeah, and I'm very, very happy to be there. Uh-huh, and you've lived there ever since. Well, I, I think my parents kicked me out when I was about 18 uh, years old. So as I well they a, should. Yeah, as well they should, and, and as I probably deserved it. Um, and, you know, I, I lived around different places in town. I probably lived in 12 or 13 Where'd years. you go to school? Well, I went to I went to Bishop High School, High school and yeah. then I went to, and then I spent a long time not going to school. Uh, and I strongly believe in self-education, but I went to Santa Barbara City College and I went to the University of California. Uh -huh. I went to UCSB. Uh -huh. uh, when I was in my final year, though, I, I was an English major and I started writing for newspapers. And I really just sort of walked away from becoming. When you say newspapers, it was primarily Santa Barbara, or was, were you really going on to try and? Very primarily Santa Barbara, although I did write for lots of different national papers and, uh -huh. and at different times in my career. But I started out writing for, um, I wrote articles for the news press. Uh, at first, a couple of articles about books, books re book reviews, and feature stories about um, theater groups. And, and then I was hired away by Randy Campbell, who had, at the time, he was one of the co-owners of the Independent later. Oh, uh oh. He, at the time, had a little magazine newspaper, not a magazine, a newspaper called Nightlight. And I worked there for about a year, and then I was hired by the Santa Barbara News and Review, which was the very much to the left predecessor of the Independent. Okay. So the people that were weekly uh, was a weekly or was that a week, and by that time Randy Campbell's paper had become the weekly, uh -huh. and the News and Review and the weekly were competing for audiences in town, and the weekly was more entertainment. And the news and review was more news and politics, uh -huh. so it had had a very radical past. And and then um, in I think it was nine, it was like seventy nine, maybe it was eighty. I think I think it was that the um, the two newspapers merged, uh -huh. and that was when Marianne Partridge bought the love um, Marianne. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. think she's great. She's a she's a treat. I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, you should be edited by her sometime, and we'll see what you have to say after that. You know, That's, yeah. and if she ever edits you and she says. I love this piece, then you should run for the hills uh, right there. Yeah, no, I never got to that point. That we, means you have six hours ahead of you with her, her well, pencil. She obviously knew 
the people I, I knew back in New York. Oh, I bet. The provocateurs, the, the, the Gloria Steinems, the, uh, right. the, the uh, Letty Pogrebins and whatever. Right. And so we did have that in common before and she got involved with us with the Book and Author Festival. And she was at the Rolling Stone. And yeah, she, was she at had the a Village great Voice, career. And yeah, yeah. yeah, and she came directly here from the Village Voice. And fa frankly, we didn't know what we'd done to deserve a Village Voice editor uh, to, uh -huh. to, yeah. to the News and Review. And then, you know, we rude the day. So, so not really. but now, could you pick your subjects? Uh, when I was writing for them? Yeah. Uh, I started as a, um, a culture writer. They, they, the news interview divided the world into news and culture. Yeah. And I was the culture writer, um, and most of the time it was I was assigned. So the first piece, I was just talking to uh, some students the other day about this. First piece I got after I was hired as a staff writer, they said, there's a succulence festival at... <laughs> at at Earl, at Earl Warren, <laughs> and I was like, Who, "So, so what?" You know, and they and they said, "No, you wanted to be a staff writer. Go, go write go about the Go succulent. succulent. Yeah, and I did, and I, I actually think I did a very good job of yeah. that, with that succulent article, my first one. But lots of things so that squeezed that, it all. Yes. Yeah, lots of things that I proposed got got done. Uh -huh. and, um, I did a very ambitious project where I imagined World War III happening, what, what would happen if it did, and Santa Barbara got hit very close by an atom bomb in the, in the early 80s. Uh, was, whatever happened to that a, article, where is it? It's in, it's in the archives of the Have new, you ever news thought of, in, of, of uh, dramatizing that? <laughs> of, <laughs> Making a movie out of it? That yeah. Would a, I, would, I think it would have to be set in an imaginary 1982 because the technology has changed a lot since then. You know. Who knows now, but... Well, think about it. But anyhow, yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah, so. But then you also, movies, you said that, that, that you got involved and in... And I did the theater, and I started doing movie reviews, and then... Um, Talk to me about theater and movie here. Okay. I mean, you were the, the movie studio, the Flying A was long flown yeah, yeah. back from wherever yeah, the heck it went. Yeah, I'm not that old, yeah. Uh, yeah. But so you were doing you were doing the movies that were opening here. Y yeah. Uh, were, were you getting to to Hollywood to to get get some of the, you know the the, the blowback the the wonderful uh, interviews with all the stars and I stuff like that. I didn't do much blowback, but uh. we would we would from time to time in the olden days we would get invited down to Los Angeles to go to, to the screenings. previews, yeah, screening, to preview yeah, screenings yeah. and things like that. Uh -huh. I did a few of those and and more actually uh, when I. When it was the news, when it was the Independent, there were there were quite a few more, and I became the arts editor in the mid '90s, oh, and good. so I attended. I got invited to a lot more uh -huh. things like that. Um, but you know, it was fun to do movie reviews because you, if you did theater reviews, you had you'd see them on the street. You know, you could pan an actor and run into him. Uh -huh, and, you know. Uh -huh. At a at a restaurant, and, <laughs> and it was kind of scary, you know. I was like, but movies, you know, not Everything so much. Everything goes. Anything not goes. so much. You could just say what, yeah. and, and and I wouldn't irresponsibly destroy a movie. Uh -huh. But if, a, but then I started getting letters from later on in my oh, career. From, I started getting letting, from letters readers, from directors readers. and and oh, screenwriters. Direct? You know, oh. screenwriters. I guess a lot of screenwriters uh -huh. live in this town. Wouldn't you? Yes. If you were, if, you yeah. were yeah. if I was a high paid screenwriter, I'd probably live in this town too. Oh, I already do. Well, or even developed it because. Paul Lazarus and at UCSB yeah, yeah. was developing a, a, the guy who wrote Logan is was a, a UCSB. I can't think of his oh, name. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, Scott yes, Frank. Scott, Scott oh, Frank. Wow. Who I actually? I can remember that. Yeah, that's very good. And I wish I could because I've met him several times and I've interviewed him. And my brother works out at the in that film department. I know. I know. And, your and brother's so, been helpful to me. Yeah, he's and so he's set me up with a lot of these guys in the past. And uh -huh. now I do a movie series now, right now, and in Isla Vista that's um, more or less uh, sponsored by the film studies department. So on Friday nights and Monday nights, I show movies. The University uh, new, but new movies or newish. You know, there would be like newish. What do we call a second run film? Or I mean, I couldn't believe that the library, the the, the public library, yeah. showed Moonlight last week. Wow. Now, how did they do that? Friday night they know. show. They do a Friday night or a Friday uh, afternoon or something uh, you series. Know, okay, so I showed it, and I showed it by coincidence. I booked it, and for the um. 
the weekend of the Academy Awards. Uh -huh. And I thought it was the best movie of the year, by and far. I still haven't seen it. It's, I, it's an amazing film. Yeah, I, I didn't think it, it was going to win. I thought, I thought La La Land was going to win. That was my favorite. But it was yeah. very good. I liked La La yeah. Land. But I loved, um, and we booked it and we showed it. So Friday night, about 200 kids came. And then on Sunday night, it won the Academy Award. And on Monday night, about 600 kids came because, oh. it, because it won the Academy Award. Uh -huh. So that was, that was good. So you, but, but here's the but. It cost me $950 to rent that movie. I don't know how the library does it. I mean, I don't want to, you well, know, but you, I, pay, I pay to, you're to pay, show films. This, now, but this wasn't a screener or something? Where, no, no, where, no, no, no. This is, no. I pay for every film that oh, I show. Wow. Oh, wow. And a lot wow. of what I pay is just intellectual property. So, uh -huh. so they might show me, they might send me a DVD. Uh-huh. In the old days, but you're paying for it. You're paying the same uh -huh. for a DVD as. You and you would. don't even charge admission. I right? do now. Oh, I, do, good. I mean, I do actually. I show. I charge admission, and then there's a Tuesday night. Um, the Associated Students show movies on Tuesday night. They're free, but you have to be a student to get into, uh -huh, into uh -huh. those. Anybody can come to my movies. Uh -huh. It costs a whopping and four, you, four do you, dollars. Do you today. introduce it and do you or do a Q&A at the end? Or, I mean, do you, do you, do, I how involved to, do you get in? I, I try to make this, my, my uh, role there, to be invisible. So I have an assistant. Oh. And she, Quinn, Quinn is her name right now, uh, my assistant this year is the face of Magic Lantern. So oh, she makes uh -huh. announcements, she does, she sets up everything. I and, see. and I think that's the way it should be, that the students uh, talk to, uh, uh -huh. talk to uh, a face How about recognize. getting the studios to, to finance to, to, to finance you? Well, once in a while they send us a preview, but that's about as close as they get to, well, to financing. Because it. it seems to be that, but some nonprofit should be, yeah, uh, should be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I thought about. I thought uh, about. Here, here we are in the, the NEA and the NEH are getting. Yeah, yeah. I thought about kibosh. approaching some Santa Barbarans who have money, but you know, the university sets up, like they go out and find people for you to. You know, you don't. You can't. You're not allowed to go out and. and oh, you know, oh, you you can't represent and, yeah. them. I suppose if somebody sense. came and gave yeah. me money, they'd be fine with that. You know. All right, let's go on because yeah. uh, you yeah. also. So you. Uh, uh, but now you you also worked at other bookstores. Do I understand that correctly? I did. I worked at um, Osborne's Bookstore, which where was um, that? That was on the in the I think it's the 800 block of State Street. It was an, it was the biggest bookstore at the time between Los Angeles and San Francisco. Wow. And it was a beautiful store. It was a really great store. Um, it Earthling was, is the, one, the first one. I, in Earthling, that spot? In Earthling, that spot? Earthling came later, and my, my brother actually was a manager of Earthling at one point. Um, but the... Uh, then there was Andromeda. Andromeda. You, well, boy, you know this all this stuff. Uh, I get it from you. I, I told you? I can't remember. Andromeda Bookstore was a, a, a comic book store that started in the... Um, Delaware Plaza, but also sold science fiction and um, mysteries. And I opened their second store in Goleta, and I ran that for several years. And that was fun. That was really a lot of fun. But, you know, I want to point out something, though, before, before we change the topic. Yeah. I worked at Osborne's. At that time, there was Earthling, there was Chaucer's, there was... The chains. Yeah, the two the chains. Two, the two, two or three chains. There was a crown bookstore, and there was at least four used bookstore. There was a monumental number of, of there were at least three great rare bookstores. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then there was, you know, there was all this other stuff. There was a, a genre, um, like I had the science fiction and mysteries in Galita. I had that sewn up. There was a mystery bookstore downtown that, that just sold mystery books right next to the Granada. Really? And the town was, you know, stinking with books. It was great. You know, there was a lot of... So what go, happened? What I don't ha know what happened. I remember that, that uh, in the Earthling, because I was close, that's, uh, that's when I came to yeah. Santa Barbara, and that's when I got involved. Yeah. But I remember they were always worrying about the encroachments of the, the expansion of the museum or the this right. or that. Right. They always said that something was going to happen. Well, the Davies bought, um, the, that's the name of yeah, the, the, the family that owned, yeah, owned yeah. the Earthling bookstore. And they began their, um, they had a tiny little store, and then they moved into to a store that was on uh, Vic near Victoria Street, uh -huh. and um, it was supposed to become the site of 
one of the big chain stores. Like, oh, oh, was that it? That yeah. was it. Okay. And they fought against yeah, that. Yeah, they did. Even though they, did. they had gotten a reduced rent because they were moving into a place that was basically condemned. And because of their fight against, um, I, can't, I can't remember what store it was that was moving up there. That's why Paseo Nuevo was built. They were going to put everything up there. All, all, everything was going to be on Upper State Street. And then um, the resistance to that, the public resistance led by them, uh -huh. was so strong that they ended up built, um, moving everything down to Paseo Nuevo. And today what is left, what is left is, is, is Chaucer's. Chaucer's, which is a great uh, store. Tecolote and... Uh, Tecolote was around in those yeah. days too, and they had three stores when I was a kid. Oh, there really? Were three Tecolotes, yeah. There was one in Montecito that's still there, there was one in the El Paseo, and there was a third one and maybe I maybe there was only two but you're right there it was great and there was the book den yeah there the book is den. The book still den. around still the book around. den is yeah. the, one of now the, carry now carrying new books and uh, you know sellers I really just you know I I I love that store. I really liked yeah. it for all my life. I mean and there's really? a scene in my book that's set in the books book den we'll talk about it later um but right now it's fantastic I don't mm. know if you've been in there like I know because Eric, I bought I bought I bought the new Chabon, Michael Chabon uh -huh. book there, I remember. Uh -huh. Anyhow, okay, because yeah. now I want to get to the, what what's paperback exchange or Mesa bookstore, are you keeping, what are you keeping? It has, it has three aliases. Three aliases. Anyhow, yeah. Yeah. DJ and his wife have bought this wonderful, wonderful bookstore right. uh, on the Mesa. And we're really, really happy that we did it. And, oh, wait, so you're calling, okay, is the paperback so, so it was originally called Fictitious Business. Oh. That was the name that they had uh -huh. chose for it. And they realized that they were, they were going to get, they could get people to bring in their books and they could trade or, or do some sort of arrangement where they were, people would bring it. So they, they gave it a subtitle, Paperback Exchange, all right? But then people started not buying books from, this is the former owners. Now okay. this is David and Lisa Karish Schiff, yeah. who we bought the store from. And so they kind of backed off from it, like they made it, they still give credit, and we, I mean, we give credit now for books that, that people bring in. Um, and then anyways, everybody was calling it the Mesa Bookstore. So they just went with it. So it just becomes so, that. So yeah. we were calling it the Mesa Bookstore, uh -huh. and well, even the day I was in there picking up your your new novel, uh -huh. uh, there was a guy wander that wandered in, I guess, and was just buying buying a book to read, uh -huh. obviously. Uh huh. Yeah, and we and we do sell. We have used books. We have very few new books, but we have, and we kept. Uh, we're trying very hard to keep. But it's the, like it's like the decor. Yeah. The uh, all the covers uh, of the out uh, covers. It's it's really for for its size, which is relatively small. It really contains an awful lot. Yeah, this of space that we're in is is like bigger than my bookstore. Yeah. <laughs> and in the store, supposedly there are ten thousand titles in, uh -huh. in this tiny little store. And it's and and I know whenever I get new books and I need to jam them in there, you know, I know. <laughs> I, I, feel, I never thought about. I can feel the ten thousand. I get to chisel uh -huh. and, and put it in there. But uh, you know, it was really. We, you know, we found out the way we found out about it was that we, my wife was a regular uh, customer there, uh -huh. and she didn't know it was for sale, and it had been for sale for a year. And I had lunch with Nick Welsh from the Independent, yeah, and he said to me, "That store that your wife goes to all the time is for sale. You should buy it." And I <laughs> And I went, well, okay, yeah. I'll will do, you know, like I'll do that. But I went home and I and I ran it ran it with my wife past my wife and she said, Oh, and the price was it was pretty reasonable and you know, we didn't really have we had some most of the money, but you know, we, and we took a little bit of a loan to to, to finish uh -huh. it up. And of course for the month between the time where we thought maybe we should do this and when we approached the the care shifts and the time we did it, we were like, oh, what are we doing? Is this crazy, you know? And and she had worked, my wife had worked at um, uh, a bookstore in San Diego um, that was And very, I used very to go to the barbershop next door. To, to use your book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we like the barbers next door. We we exchange quips with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice little that. Yeah, that's a nice little aisle. You got, aisle there. You got Taco Bell for au cuisine. Yes, yes, you right, got, right. You got the and they got Rose shop, Cafe. And the Rose Cafe, Cafe, and I love and the, the laundry Japanese, and the Japanese laundry. restaurant right, that's there. Right, that's right. It's a great neighborhood. That's, I love it. I wish you all great, great success. Thank you. Success. And and everybody is like you has been coming in and just you know people have just every day come uh, in and shake our hands and say thank uh -huh. you for doing this. Yeah, I feel like I saved the world with. Well, in this, uh, boy, I think they're, they're, a, a bookstore is just the most exciting yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a big sign that, that the Kara Schiff's put on the on the front of the store that says, now selling battery-free books. <laughs> <laughs> and I All think, right, now <laughs> we come to... <laughs> that's it. Uh, where are you going to put this book? This book you're not going to be able to put in no, your... this is my book that this I've is, long... This is his novel, which is just coming out. The long saga it, of my book when, coming uh, out. And what I think I'm going to do in the bookstore is tell me nothing. I'm going to get rid of all the books. <laughs> just, <laughs> just have, have this. this. And we're going to rename the store the Nothing That Is Ours bookstore. And so the title is Nothing That Is Ours. If anybody wants to know where ours. they can buy it, they can, that's where you can buy it. Anyhow, all I can tell you is it is a wonderful ride to open up the pages. We're talking about Santa Barbara, 1958. Uh, and our hero is a newspaper it was a newspaper man right. who doesn't work for the news suppress. <laughs> that got me at the outset, and I was you I had was me on, at the news. I suppress, was on a joy ride the, the oh, whole time. That's so great. How did Thank you, you come so across? I mean, tell me the the how the the, the birth of this the book. The genesis of you, this book. Well, you know. Um, I started out thinking about writing a very different book than, than what it turned out to be. Um, I really was very, very interested in Castle Rock, which I have a little postcard of here, but we'll, maybe we'll show yeah, it Yeah, we're going to show sure. Castle Rock, and we Castle may Rock. insert it later. Yeah, yeah. which is, a, which is a, a, a monumental rock formation that was at in the, the harbor. That was at the end of Castillo Street, which is why Castillo Street is Castle Street. Okay, uh -huh. that and there was another reason for it too, but, but mostly it was because of Cas Castle Rock that was destroyed by the Santa Barbarans, even though it had been a tourist, it was blown up with a dynamite. Blown up physically? Blown up with dynamite, yeah. Because they wanted to build a harbor. And for some reason, I'm not ex sure exactly what the, what the engineering aspect of it was, but they felt that they could not build the harbor there with, with Castle that Rock. With so, that rock so it was destroyed in, in order to build in order to build the harbor. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. Now the harbor So what that what was that nineteen fifty eight? Is no, that no, is it that, was way before way that. Before it was nineteen that. 1925 after oh. the earthquake. Okay. Supposedly the rock was was destroyed or was partially destroyed by the earthquake. That that's I've read that. I don't know. And then the the uh, the the harbor was begun the following year after the earthquake. And um, and there was a big argument about the harbor, where the harbor would be. Was it would it be in the bird refuge, which would have meant just which is where I live, about where I yeah, live. right East, where you live. That, that would East be the Beach. harbor if they and that they would have just dug a trench to the ocean, and boats would have come in there, and 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 the, they would have filled somehow. Yeah, you know, yeah. Know. Or uh, Fleischmann, the you know the yeast baron, right, gave most of the money to the city to to build the harbor. And he wanted it there, uh -huh. and that was his stipulation. So they built the harbor there, and um, and you know it's caused a lot of uh, controversy and damage over the years. The, it where the harbor is and where the breakwater is changed the flow of water and changed the flow of sand so that like beaches that are you know the beaches the, moved yeah the beaches moved and they have to dredge that harbor every year the army corps of engineers has to come in and and, and now make no mistake i love the harbor i, I uh, used to walk every day in the harbor well i think it's the beautiful. character does the character yeah. does the characters yeah. also yeah uh i mean we have Aldous Huxley, who is who is okay. living there, living uh, in Santa uh, Barbara. Aldous Huxley. And you, and the, and I'm, I'm thinking of you as the hero. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> interview Aldous Huxley. I guess you're a little too young to. I was a little. I was seven years old. And that was that. true. Right? That is That's true. Fact. Um, Huxley came to Santa Barbara in 1959, and this was one of the reasons why I changed it. Originally, I was going to write about the destruction of the harbor. Of the harbor. Uh -huh. But then. And, and sort of as an idea that this is the old way that people used to think about 
you know, we have dominance over the planet, we'll do whatever we want to yep. do. And by the 60s, that had changed a lot. And, and I really realized that I wanted to write about 1959 because it was the turning point. The 60s were going to be next year. Uh -huh. And Huxley came to Santa Barbara in 1959. He was the first guest lecturer at the university. He was brought in and he gave a series of talks that were called the human situation. Not the human condition, the human situation. And they were so popular that people, Santa Barbans went out there, they filled the hall and they had to put loudspeakers in the um, on outside so the people, so the people who couldn't get in all this Huxley there. talk about the, the future and what he talked about the things that he talked about were the kinds of things that that when I was growing up ten years later when I was a teenager we were interested in things like overpopulation the environment um, foreign wars in places like Vietnam uh, he w he was preaching the um, the good side of taking psychedelic drugs uh, and all uh, those things. Psychedelic yeah. drugs and drugs come uh, are peppered throughout they're, they're, the book. Yeah, I would say. Because it's really, uh, they, uh, don't, I don't want you to make it that serious. Because yeah. I, I, yeah. the, the, there's, there's a wonderful flippancy that, that, that goes along there. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks. And we have some of the great great historic figures. Pearl. Right. Pearl Chase Pearl was still Chase alive. Pearl Chase comes in. Stork. Uh, Stork was Stork. still alive. Uh, they were really influential. They were really changing the shape but, of Santa but Barbara. But your characterization of Pearl, Pearl, is that at all anywhere near true? I don't know. I never you, met you, her. You, uh, huh? I saw her once. I never met her. I, oh, you know, my. <laughs> I have. I've it's a read, wonderful, you know. I mean, you. she could be a wonderful character of, you know, a heroine of a book. Almost. Well, you know, it is kind of a mystery, right? Yeah. And at one point, I thought about having Pearl be the murderer. <laughs> <laughs> And then I thought maybe maybe I could make her a vampire, which I realized there were too many scenes in the daytime, so I didn't I didn't know. No. I wanted to uh, I wanted to bring her as alive as possible, and, and I and Wonder I read oh, a lot. She's a wonderful character. I read a lot about her, and uh -huh. I did I did thank you. I, I read a lot about her, and um, and there's an aspect of her that is I think a little bit malignant in the book. I mean, there's a there's a kind of evil in this to what yeah. what she does, but not really, not like like she's uh, but she was you know, she was a kind of like she used the telephone. And she never got married. She never got married. Cudgel. She never got married. A lot of a lot of really uh, famous men went after her. Uh-huh. You know? Um, but she said no to all of them. She took care of her father to, during a lot of, of her life, and you know. I now want to know what you're going to do with this book. What am I going to do with it? Yes, I mean, I, you got to sell this book, and when it's it going and to be available. And <laughs> well, are you, know, you doing are you doing Chaucer's? Have you worked that out? My uh, my, my good friend Mari Curley assured me that I could have it. So I hope you're watching Mari. But it wasn't. I remember I went. You know, when I moved here and I was a teenager. I went to the book den all the time. But I want to know how this book is going to be. I, well, you know, it's, it's, it's there's a publisher. I mean, I'm not self-publishing, yep. all right? Okay. So, so I do have a publisher, so. and um, the story of the how the book came to be was, um, the book was published by Asahin and Wallace. It's going to be available in the next couple of weeks. It's They believe in um, in You've got to do radio. You've got to do Television, television, you've got to do all of that stuff. And it's it, such a Santa Barbara. And boy. if any director <laughs> friends of mine want to make a movie of it, please, I'm available. I, you know, I don't think it, it's going to be. Movie. Let's not, let's I'm not very proud right. of it, though. But I want, I want it to go beyond Santa Barbara. Oh. Uh, that's a, a, that that yeah. takes money oh. and it takes plan. Hey, baby, don't you want to go to the Cajun dance in the Zydeco?